what's up you guys, Wyatt Moore here, everyone's favorite YouTuber who stutters and mispronounces, and today coming back at it with another vinyl update, uh, got some good selection here, some black metal, death metal, noise rock, and some dark ambience I'll be talking to you guys about in a second, but before we get into that, if you're wondering what's playing in the background, we're listening to Shrine of Insanibilis, this is some really kick-ass uh, black metal from Germany that I highly recommend if you just like kick-ass black metal simply put so let's get it going with the first one did a review of this about a few about two weeks ago so I'm not gonna go too much in depth with it and that is the latest Musmahu Reign of the Odious uh, just want to correct one thing I said in my review that I made a mistake on is that I said Suara the Puth is the vocalist behind this project he is not it's someone else I just cannot pronounce to save my life but uh, Suara the Puth mastermind behind the ancient records bands like Azalus of Sath, Kev Nexamu, Mystic, and tons of others that are just grade A top tier black metal. Uh, is, he's now diving into some death metal type of work and he does the guitars and bass on this album along with the keyboards too I believe that pop up rarely only on the second track and the outro. But this is some really damn good uh, blackened to an extent death metal that is just full of energy, just always on this kind of like one-sided fast-paced execution, but just done with so much energy and great execution with the transitions that it's a total banger, and it's not really something I really uh, look out for that much, but uh, he just does such a damn good job, so he's good at not only black metal, but also death metal as well. And the vocals on here are really kind of like this similar type you would get out of like um, Gua type of vocals, type of like that one-sided grunt, but it just does its job and that's really all I need out of it, but uh, again, my only problem with this album, like I said in my review, is that as much as I enjoy death metal, I need hooks, and there's not really that many hooks on this album, but, you're, but what makes up for it is just the aggression and execution that you kind of just get in awe and and that's especially uh, how I get lost in it so much is with the drums on here that are just executed so well done but yeah still widely available on uh, Iron Bonehead you can get it for you know retail price and it's worth it so here's the artwork backside just track listings gatefold mastermind himself right there who does guitars and bass and it's just on plain black vinyl. But yeah, if you want so far one of the best death metal, black metal albums of 2019 so far, even though we're only in February, definitely check out Muse Metal. Alright, now second up is going to be Health with Slaves of Fear. As of right now, this may not be saying much because we're only like in the beginning of February, but as of right now, from what I've heard of 2019 releases, this is easily my personal favorite 2019 release as of now. I know we're only in February, so that's really not saying much, but uh, for all you guys who don't know, Health is a noise rock band, as they're mostly labeled, that infuses uh, industrial, EDM, and electronica into their sound, and it makes for some very creative just music in general that I've been keeping up with these guys for the past couple of years, and what's funny enough, how I discovered Health is that uh, one time I was watching the Eric Andre show, and like always when he does like his last minute uh, kind of like musical act, again it's like pretty much like as you guys know, the Eric Andre show is just basically a shit post of a talk show host, but it's fucking hysterical. He had health play, but they were like playing with like kitchen utensils and like smashing blenders and smashing food all over the place. And all I thought was that is a badass noise rock band that I need to check out. And to my surprise, there's so much more than noise rock. Like I stated, they infuse industrial, EDM, and electronica. And it makes for some really dancey yet hard-hitting noise rock. Like, picture being in a, in a nightclub, but a band, instead of like just electronics, it's a band playing with, you know, really distorted guitars and whatnot. And what's also a nice, pleasant surprise is that the vocals are just so smooth and elegant and just kind of works with the synthy moments, but when the guitars kick in, it really makes out for like some jam out moments, while also being like dancey is something you would expect in like a nightclub. It's an odd blend, but these guys know how to do it really damn well. And uh, I'll be doing a review for this, mainly because um, this is kind of cheap to show this off, considering the fact that all the pre-orders 
for this album, because I got an email for it, shipped out two weeks in advance from the official release date. So uh, I'll, I'll be doing a review of this next uh, when the official release date comes out. That way you guys can check it out in its entirety and make your own opinion about it. But as of now, you can check out the tracks. Uh, uh, what is it? I believe it's Slaves of Fear and one other track that I'll link you guys to. And it's really fucking promising just from those two tracks alone. But just take it from me, guys. The best has been yet to be posted online so I urge you to uh, if you want something very unique in music check out health but yeah this uh, record right here was on the pre-orders again Slaves of Fear uh, dedicated to the memory of Barbara Leal which I don't know who that is uh, track listings on the front right there printed in her sleeve just a lot of credits a lot of like guesswork on here apparently the guitarist of uh, Code of Orange did some spots on here. Uh, Code Orange. I don't know why I said Code of Orange, but the guitarist of Code Orange did a guest spot on here. And I like this at the very end right here. It says, This record was conceived to be played in excess of 90 decibels. Do your best. So it's meant to be played loud, pretty much. And it comes on this semi translucent red vinyl. Pretty sure the pre orders for this are still up, but I guess people who pre ordered very much in advance got theirs. Uh, a few weeks early which is really cool but yeah from what I've heard this is uh, so far the best I've heard of 2019 which I know it's not saying much but uh, for me personally when we get to the end of the year this is definitely gonna be somewhere on my list But yeah health slaves of fear continuing on next halfway there we got KFR with his sophomore full length Necro Max was planning on releasing this on vinyl years ago, but I guess never got around to it, and continued on with his uh, project KFR with albums like Zero and his double album that he released uh, last year, which was phenomenal, I might add, even though it didn't make my albums of the year list, it was just short of it. But Necro, for me, and uh, KFR's discography, this is his meanest, this is his most diabolical, and easily his most aggressive, I feel like, where if you want to like kind of get an idea of KFR, like... His album's not really accessible for most people, but if you want the most accessible, because the aggression parts, I feel like, would really kind of, like, capture a lot of um, black metal fans, especially, again, because he draws so much influence from it. Like, the LLM, like, you know, early Mutilation, early Vlad Tempe's, um, Black Murder, and that other band that we all forget about in the LLM. Um, I urge you to give this one a listen first out of all of it. Still Anti is my favorite, but Necro I feel like I play more often just because the aggression is there, the noise is there, just it's mean, it's diabolical, it'll make your skin crawl just like all the other releases, but just more of a pissed off demeanor I feel like. And again, Max always does phenomenal work with his art, with his music, and um, this is no exception. But yeah, just got released on vinyl last month from his, uh, this is his brother's label, uh, Sunship Records right there if you can see that limited to a hundred copies comes with this sheet hand numbered always with his blood I got number 76 out of 100 still might be available I urge you to get it because he always likes doing one time only pressings with his vinyl releases so uh, obviously get it while you can and is just on plain black vinyl but uh, yeah influence of dark ambience and black metal again Forming a huge influence from the LLN, but like I always state, that always pisses people off. I think he does it even better. So yeah, KFR Necro. All right, now continuing on next is an album I feel like we've all just come across randomly on YouTube because it's always been in my related uh, videos every time I'm on YouTube, and that would be Black Mountain Transmitter with Black Goat of the Woods. Oh boy, another dark ambient album to make it into my collection. And this guy's, like I stated on my social medias when I posted it, this is basically the equivalent of communicating with aliens, but musically, alright? I know that's a really weird description, but trust me, when you listen to it, you'll be like, ah, why it was right for once. Uh, Black Mountain Transmitter is a dark ambient project that infuses kind of like drone and noise, but not like the staticky noise. It's kind of like the type of noise that grows tension and atmosphere, build up, and just kind of like 
something to keep your attention on the music playing, because like I stated when I talked about the Hacks and Cloak, with Black Ambient, not Black Ambient, sorry, with Dark Ambience, it's not really a genre on its own that just really captivates my attention. There's no, like, just a lot of it doesn't have the substance for me to absorb it and, like, really kind of gather what's being played, but when Dark Ambience has all these other features, like, like this album that has, you know, drone and noise, it makes me kind of, like, pay attention a bit easier. And this, to me personally, if you're looking for more phenomenal Dark Ambience, this is in the ranks with, like, the Hacks and Cloak for being, like, top-tier Dark Ambient music. It's very weird and unsettling, but it's that's what makes it so intriguing for a Dark Ambient album. And it's very abstract and different, but uh, again, if you want something very different for your music listens, I urge you to give this a uh, shot. Really stoked to see this got the vinyl treatment last year, and I was just so unaware of it, and I just got my copy in time because it was like, like I don't know, two or three copies left on the band camp from when I bought it, so if you can get it, I urge you to get it. Anyway, it comes with this little card, like that goat dude. <laughs> and just credits on the back side, and just like everything else is on 108 gram, as I like to say, plain black vinyl. So yeah, if you want more top tier dark ambient music, this is another must listen, so Black Mountain Transmitter. All right, now coming up second to last is an avant-garde death metal band that uh, I'm amazed it took me this long to find something by them. And that would be Stargazer, with their latest full length as of yet, emerging to the Boundless. Stargazer is an avant-garde death metal band that does play around with black metal every so often and progressive death metal too. But, you know, like I always complain about with progressive music in general, whether it's progressive rock, progressive metal, progressive death metal, progressive black metal, whatever. When I hear the word progressive, I start to get a little weary because it seems like with progressive music is that it kind of gets pretentious because there's like all these like I don't know, detours with the music that just kind of makes me lose interest, which is why I'm just not really a big fan at all of Dream Theater, is that they go through all these different you know, detours with the music, and it's just like it bores me. And even with extreme music that includes progressive uh, elements, it still bores me. But with Stargazer, even though they have a strong influence of like progressive metal coming through, yeah, it's there with the detours, and you're going to get like this uh, bass tone that is really what you would come to expect with progressive music, but it leads to something. It's not like this detour, and it's like, ah, oh, we just threw it in there to just show that we can do all these cool, weird patterns with our guitars and bass and drums and then just cancel the track. These detours that are, that are progressive don't really feel like they're just forced in to just be this random detour. It really latches and just carries the pace of the aggressive uh, tones of this album. And overall, Stargazer just does great, great stuff um, with their progressive moments. But I think what really sells me on this is the fact that it really reminds me a lot of uh, Argus Slint when the aggressive moments come on, but more uh, emphasis on progression and uh, I guess experimentation. So if you want a very experimental take of like an Argus Lint band, definitely check out Stargazer. Again, I think another reason why they get compared a lot is that they did a split them two not too long ago. But uh, yeah, if you want non-racist Argus Lint, definitely check out Stargazer. And uh, just so happened that finally Armageddon got a copy of this for Wicked Cheap and I bought it with no hesitation. And the track on here I urge you to check out because I feel like this is like the definitive track on this album is an Earth Rides and It's Endless Carousel. That track will sell you alone on this album, I can guarantee it. Anyway, artwork, gatefold, backside. And again, uh, what does this come with? It comes with a plain black vinyl, how exciting. But yeah, Stargazer, really top quality, avant-garde, progressive death metal. Check this out. And final one for this video, all I gotta say is, thankfully, and finally, Heritage Records did a repress of this masterpiece. I've wanted this for so long. Nocturnal Morum, The Voice of Steel, my personal favorite by these guys, and I don't say that lightly because these guys have made so many releases that I just drool over. Stuff like Lunar Poetry, stuff like Goat Horns, The Taste of, um, of Victory, 
Just so many releases these guys have done that's just always put me in awe at how perfectly they can blend symphonic and folk and black metal and really bring out the best of all three of those elements into something just truly spectacular and signature, all right? I feel like Nocturnal Mortem, for me, definitely lays out kind of like the blueprints and the standard for how uh, this type of music should be played out. And I've always considered this their best because it's just really on a next level of creativity and just epic and climactic. Every single track just have like these massive moments that come through that it's really impossible for me to really say which is my personal favorite track on here. Just from start to finish, there's always going to be a climactic moment that just really captivates your attention and will just sell you alone. So each track just has its selling points. But um, so stoked to see this got repressed because the uh, first press got either blacklisted or goes for an arm and a leg. So uh, I was really happy to see uh, Heritage Records uh, repress this. I missed out on the uh, wooden box set edition. It was like limited to, I don't know, like 30 or 66 uh pressings I think the box that was released to and it was funny I had it in my cart and as I was checking it out it sold out but instead of being a fucking bitch and complaining that I missed out on something I just got the this edition and continued on with my life but uh, yeah this is the remastered version so everything sounds even more crisp it sounds even more melodic it just sounds more of everything and it just again just puts me more in awe so it's kinda like a box set as you can see really well made and durable. I love the uh, gloss print right there on the logo and on the album title right here. And it's a uh, triple LP unlike the first press that was double LP. Comes with always these big ass booklets. And I must admit Heritage Records does a phenomenal job with their pressings and all like the little extra tidbits. They kind of bring in with the, it, you just really get your money's worth out of it, both like musically and with all the little tidbits. And again, triple um, LP all printed in their sleeves, so I'll just show them really quick. Site A and B, the sword, C and D, some symbols, and the last side, the band members. And this variant comes on like this or semi-translucent orange and black swirl that goes perfectly with the album artwork. I think limited to like 300 copies or so, not sure. I believe, don't quote me on it, that the standard black is still available on Heritage Records. I urge you to get it if you can. And I know, and from what I've heard, I don't know if it's going to be Heritage or somewhere else that they're going to do a repress of Goat Horns and Lunar Poetry, which will, I will be all over that when I find out where, because uh, Nocturnal Mortem, their discography is, to me anyway, near flawless, and if you want the absolute best, the album that will make you say, yes, I'm a Nocturnal Mortem fan, Voice of Steel, can't stress it enough. All the little features of, like, all these folk instruments that come in and out that make each track have its own unique take, it's just, it's impossible for me to say which uh, track is my personal favorite. But I guess some some of them that I'll just announce for you guys that really kind of like, are, I guess are my personal favorites are the title track, The Voice of Steel, Ukraine, which has just these gorgeous um, clean vocals come through, and Pathway of the Sun. Those three tracks I feel like will definitely intrigue you enough to buy it and, or listen to it in its entirety. But, uh, yeah, guys, that's it for this final update. Like always, links provided to everything I've shown off will be in the description below along with what was playing in the background. Like always, guys, hopefully you guys discovered something new. Thanks for watching, liking, supporting, and subscribing. You guys are the best, and good lessons.